Hi, buddy. This is Mr. Folly. And welcome to Podcast 10.1. Sorry about that. Uh, solutions, and we're going to learn what a solution is. Find out that water is special. Learn the definitions of solute, solvent, and solution. Find out why like dissolves like. Solubility rules again. Soap. That's new for some people. Perhaps maybe Lauren will pay attention to this part this time. Concentrate and dilute and molarity. And let's get started. All right. Water is special. Water's special qualities come from its hydrogen bonds and bent shape. You need to know that. It has hydrogen bonds and bent shape. Water beads up and makes drops. Hey, look at that. Water's so attracted to itself, it stays together like that. Water has a high surface tension. Look how the bugs can walk on the water. Because it's so attracted to itself, the bugs don't have enough force in their feet to slide down there. Ice ring, ice floats, we've talked about that before. You'll see a cool video on that in class. And high heat suffusion and vaporization, because it's so attracted to itself. And it loves charges. See this beam of water? Woo! It's bending around that without touching it for the charges. And it dissolves a bunch of stuff. Water is rarely pure. It is often a solution. The definition of a solution is a homogeneous mixture, which means, and this is from way back when, every sample is exactly the same as every other sample. Okay? A solution can be a solid and a solid. A solid, oh, a solid and a solid is called an alloy. A solid and a liquid. A liquid and a liquid. Now, things that are liquid in a liquid. This comes down here. A liquid dissolved in a liquid. And is not really called soluble. It's called miscible. So if one liquid dissolves in another, it's miscible, like water and vinegar, like this. Okay. Gases can dissolve in a liquid, and pretty much anything can dissolve is what we're trying to get at. There's two parts. The solute is the smaller part or smaller parts, and the solvent is the biggest part. Okay, So if I have sugar, Kool-Aid powder, and water, I have two solutes, smaller parts, and one solvent. And the solution will be all of those together. Give the solutes and solvent for Kool-Aid the good way. The good way means lots of sugar. Yeah, watch out, diabetes. So the solutes, which I just did, the solutes are the two smaller parts, which are sugar, Kool-Aid, oh yeah, and then the, whoops, that's not a solvent, and the solvent is water. Okay, tap water. Most of tap water, most of it is a solvent, um, is H2O. But the solute for tap water, there's lots of them in there. We put stuff in our um, in our water. Now, we don't put iron in there. That's kind of why it tastes a little rusty sometimes. We allow iron to be in there. We put fluoride in there, right, to help our teeth so we don't look British. Um, we put magnesium in there. Um, there's, believe it or not, I think it's silicon in some video that talks about those things. But there's a bunch of junk in there that's just, eh, it's okay. Believe it or not, there's a tolerance of arsenic, poison, that's allowed in there or else it would be too expensive to make our water. If something is 98% rubbing alcohol, the other 2% is water. So my, in this case, notice how we've got two liquids. We really just say they're miscible. But by the strictest definition of solute and solvent, rubbing alcohol is the solvent. It's the biggest part. And water is the solute. But really, we just say they're miscible with two liquids. And you don't, so you don't pay too much attention to the other parts. Dissolving. Dissolving occurs most of the time because of an electrostatic attraction. Electrostatic attraction means a positive loves a negative, and a negative loves a positive. Kind of like uh, what's Rose loves Leo, and, or Dawson? Was, no, what was his first name? I know John knows it, and I can't think of it. Oh, something Dawson. But oh, what was his first name? Dawson something? I don't remember. Um, but a positive loves a negative, and a negative loves a positive. So they would dissolve. They'd mix together. The purple loves you, water. I love you, water. And the water, I love you, purple. And they mix together and make happiness, unlike the joy that you have in the sinking Titanic. Um, if there's no charge, there's not much attraction. So basically, it is the mixing due to kinetic energy. 
Now, the reason why, okay, we'll get into that a little bit more. So if there's no charge, so things that are uncharged mix due to kinetic energy. So there's electric, electrostatic attraction. If you have charges, positives and negatives love each other and they mix. And these, this is negatively charged, the positive end of water loves that. So why do nonpolar things dissolve? There's no repulsion, so they just mix. There's a little bit of attraction due to London dispersion forces, but really it's very, 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 very minute. Okay. So why do nonpolar things dissolve? Because there's no repulsion. How many dates does it take for you to dump your King of Hearts date? So this is why do ionics dissolve? Because what we know is like Na and Cl is a strong ionic bond. That bond is strong. Look out. That is one of the strongest bonds there is an ionic bond. But these things split up and Na positive is wooed away by a bunch of water molecules. So because that bond is strong, it's a strong attraction. They're in love. But what happens is kind of like sodium's on The Bachelor. And all of a sudden, well, I've got a girlfriend, but I was invited to be on The Bachelor. And then I'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven girls at once dying to date me. Well, hmm, maybe I'll dump my girlfriend, who's wonderful, and go be on The Bachelor. Ah, oh, I know, guys are jerks, aren't they? So how many dates does it take for you to dump your King of Hearts date? So if... You had seven people say, I'll go with you at once. All seven of us will be your date to King of Hearts. Bam! Your date is gone. As well, perhaps they should be. So why doesn't every ionic compound dissolve? It has positive and negative charges. So how do you really measure what happens? The solute-solute bonds must break. So again, if I use NaCl as a, as a kind of focus here. Remember how I talked about this is a strong bond? Oops. NaCl bond must break. That's endo. Remember, breaking bonds absorbs energy. It takes energy to do that. Solute-solvent bonds must form. So solute, that would be the Na positive, and solvent, that's water, must form. Now notice, this bond is weaker, so it just takes more of them. So if somebody said, you've got, you know, I'll give you a $20 bill if you mow my lawn. No. But what if I give you $101 bills? Oh, so it's kind of that water is like $101 bills that come with the same thing. So it must be favorable, means it must be exothermic. So if number two is greater than number one, the thing will dissolve. Okay. Solubility rules. You have a sheet that tells you all your solubility rules. You should know what's always soluble and that will help your life a lot. Soap. Soap helps dirt dissolve. Soap has a polar end to dissolve in water. Remember, polar dissolves in polar. And a nonpolar end to dissolve dirt, grime, goo, etc. Hydrophobic and hydrophilic. Remember, phobic means afraid of, right? So the hydrophobic end is nonpolar. It hates water. Hydro is water. Hydrophilic end is polar. Philic means love loves water and it really loves polar things so hates water it still like dissolves like so if this end remember if you see something that's c to h and only c to h this is nonpolar this is attractive to grime grime loves the tail this part right here has a charge on it so this is has a charge, H2O loves the noggin. Do a little, uh, you know, I'm not sure that I know how to spell noggin. And I've only heard, again, I've never seen Finding Nemo. I've only heard Finding Nemo talk about the noggin dude. Concentration is the measure of the amount of solute per amount of solvent or solution. Sometimes it's solution. So it's either the little part versus the big part or the little part versus everything. So measure the amount of solute versus solvent. So we've got the word concentrated, which is lots of solute relative to solvent or solution. And we have the word dilute, which means little solute. Relative 
And it could be solvent or it could be a solution. It doesn't really matter. So dark Kool-Aid or light Kool-Aid? Dark Kool-Aid is concentrated because it has lots of Kool-Aid particles. And light Kool-Aid particles would have less, so it would be dilute. And notice how these are always relative to each other. Stinky Lab Partner has concentrated BO. Our not very stinky lab partner would have dilute BO. And that's the best you can hope for in 4.5 is dilute BO, because let me tell you, that class has problems. Rusty tasting water is concentrated with iron, and tasteless water is dilute with iron. Dilute with iron. So 70% of guys in the college would be concentrated with dudes. Versus, or 50% guys in a college, ooh, that's tough. I guess it would, remember, it's always relative. It would be dilute relative to the other one of dudes. Molarity is the most common chemistry way of determining concentration. Molarity's formula is moles of solute over liters of solution. The units are capital M, and it said molar. So if you have to find 25 grams of calcium fluoride, dissolve in 150 milliliters of water, find the molarity. Now notice, it's moles of solute, I didn't give you moles, and liters of solutions, I didn't give you liters. So this is what we do to you all of the time. Molarity equals moles over liters. So I need to change 25 grams of calcium fluoride into moles. Always go through moles, always go through moles, always go through moles. 25 grams of calcium fluoride, I hate you calcium fluoride, I'm going to cancel you so I never have to see you again. Grams anyway. So one is moles, and then I'm going to go to the periodic table. And I'm sitting in a dark room with a solar calculator. This could be tough. Cal calcium is 40.08, and each fluorine is 19. So 40.08 plus 19 plus 19 is 78.08. Hope I recall those numbers correctly. So 25 divided by second answer is 0 0.320. 0 0.320 moles of CaF2. Hey, I'm almost there. 0 0.320 moles. And then I hope, being the wizards that you are, if you have milliliters, you'd move the decimal three places. One, two, three. That's 0 0.150 liters. So remember, milliliters to liters, deci, three to the left. And find the molarity. So 0 0.32 divided by 0 0.15 is... 2.13 molar. And if you want to have fun, go to IHateMyTeeth.com. You will laugh and be there for hours and hours and hours. How many grams of CO2 gas are in a 2.5 times 10 to the negative 2 molar solution of Dr. Pepper? Because I gave up Diet Coke for Lent. <laughs> no, I didn't. So if I have 2.5 E negative 2 molar equals moles over liters. Now the reason is I can't figure this one out because it doesn't give me a, a volume to work with. So um, I should have had this in there. A solution of Dr. Pepper in a 455 milliliter can. Isn't it sad I know that? So if it's 455 milliliter can, that means this is going to be 0.455 liters. Sorry, I had a bad qu question in there. So let's find the moles. 2.5 E negative 2 times 0.455 equals 0.0114. But remember to ask for grams. Okay, How can a gas be the solute? Now remember, there's bubbles. You open the can, and they come out. And when you drink it, you even feel the bubbles come out of it, and you feel the bubbles in your tongue. It actually ch tastes differently because it changes the pH or the acidity of it. 0.0114 moles of CO2 times dividing bar. Goodbye, moles of CO2. And go to the periodic table, moles of CO2, which is 44.01. 0 0.0114 times 44.01 is, oh, I hope I had equals, right, 0 0.502 grams of CO2. How can a gas be the solute? Um, now, it is attractive to solvent.
that's how. If you're attractive enough, people will like you. Water is special because of hydrogen bonding. Remember, we like water. Like dissolves like, but ionics need a lot of like. So we need a lot of meaning number of like. Part of soap loves everything except John. Concentrated has lots of solute per solvent. Dilute has little solute per solvent. Molarity is moles of solute over liter solution and measures concentration. So that's it. And I will talk to you later and say toodles. Where's my off button?